Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another video. So it has been a few days since I did the last video and that's again because of some uh, health issues I had before but now I am actually on a very good way to recovery and I'm here with the next Arch Linux monthly install for June 2021. Now in this video we are going to install Arch Linux from scratch and we are going to install it with the Sway window manager. Now it's not going to be a full Sway window manager tutorial because otherwise the video is going to be too long but I'm going to show you how you can basically install Sway and change a few options and I'm going to give you also of course all the resources you need so that you can continue building your window manager based on Wayland. Now before we get started here let me pull over one website that I would like to show you and this is the website for the Sway window manager. So this is a very nicely written wiki and it's maintained by the developers. Now, as it says here at the beginning of the wiki, Sway is not an X11 window manager. It does not work like one. So that means basically that Sway is based on Wayland and not X11, meaning that many applications that are running on X11 will not work on Wayland unless you install a compatibility layer, which I'm gonna show you later. Now, a very, very important point here for people who want to use Sway is the next paragraph. So the biggest problem with Sway are the NVIDIA drivers. So as you can see here, all proprietary graphic drivers are unsupported. This includes the NVIDIA proprietary driver. The open source Nouveau driver is required instead. This is not gonna change, don't ask. And then they say here, tip, buy your hardware with open source support in mind. So basically there is a incompatibility between NVIDIA drivers and Sway and apparently it's not gonna go away anytime soon. So this is very important to keep in mind if you're using your window manager with normal usage, uh, just emailing and browsing, it shouldn't be an issue, but if you're expecting to game on this with the Nuvo driver, expect, of course, performance hits. Okay, I will leave a link to this wiki in the video description below because uh, it has a lot of information explaining exactly the differences between using, for example, commands with X11 and Wayland in this case. And I'm gonna show you, of course, some of those when we're gonna build the window manager. Now, let me close this window. And as you can see, I already here have one virtual machine uh, ready to go. I have two virtual machines here. I have a, a virtual machine, this one with a UEFI, and I have also a virtual machine ready to go with MBR Legacy. Because I want to show you actually on both machines how you can partition the disk. So you can have both options and then you can just follow the installation afterwards, no matter which system you're using. So let's go ahead here. Let me actually press first the E key because I need to actually change the video parameter so that it picks up my display resolution. This is something uh, for the virtual machine. You probably don't have to do this. And now we can boot up our machine. So it's gonna take a moment here to load Arch Linux. As I said, this is the uh, June 2021 ISO. And we're gonna start uh, by changing a few things and then partitioning our disk and creating all the other things we need. So there you go. So the first thing I wanna do here is to change the font size because I know for you guys it's also too small to watch. So I'm gonna type in set font and then tur-132n. So the terminus font is already pre-installed and we can set the size with this so you can see it looks better on the screen. Now let's clean up the terminal. The next thing I wanna do is to refresh once my repositories and make sure that I have an internet connection. So first I type in IP space A. Now you can see there the interface number 2ENP1S0 is the ethernet interface and it has an IP where it says INET ending with 124. So 192.168.122.124. And that's because it's basically picking up my internet connection from my ethernet cable. Now, if you have Wi-Fi, then you'll need to use the IWCTL utility. So first of all, you will have to be able to see your Wi-Fi adapter in this list. You probably have a third or fourth interface, which is called uh, WLAN something. Uh, or WN something, it depends really on the name of your adapter. So if you wanna use that to uh, connect to the internet, we'll need to type in IWCTL. And as you can see, we are using now the IWD utility. So first of all, usually the station, it's called WLAN zero. That's usually the name that IWD recognizes for Wi-Fi adapters. So you would have to type in, in here, for example, station, 
WLAN 0, connect, and then you enter the name of your network. Then once you have done that and you hit enter, you will be asked for the passphrase. Once you enter your passphrase, you will be connected to the internet as well. Then once you have done that, you can just type in, in here simply exit and you will go back to the root Arch ISO. So before refreshing the repositories, let me actually change my keyboard layout because the ISO defaults actually to the uh, American keyboard, which I don't have. So I'm just going to type in the layout of my keyboard here. There you go. And now we can proceed and refresh our repositories. So let's type in pacman-syy just to make sure that we have also an internet connection there with the repository. As you can see, we have core, extra, and community. So that means we are ready to go. So let's clean up the terminal lsplk. So we have one disk in this machine and it's called VDA, as you can see, and it's 50 gigabytes. It's an empty disk. So we are ready to partition it. Now, as I said before, this is a UFI system. So we'll need to partition this disk with a GPT label. So to do this this time, I'm going to use another tool, which is a little bit more graphical than GDisk, which is called CGDisk. And then the device path. So slash dev slash VDA and then hit enter. Now, warning, non-GPT or damage is detected. This is because we have an empty disk, basically. So we can just press any key here to continue. And it's going to create, basically, for you a GPT data structure. Now, you can see here we have our disk. And it's, of course, now empty. So we need to create the first partition. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to create uh, three partitions. I'm going to create an EFI partition, a root partition and a home partition. Then later during the installation, I'm going to actually create also a swap file. When I'm going to do this on the legacy system, I'm going to actually create a swap partition, a root partition and a home partition. And we don't need there a boot partition being an MBR legacy system, except in some situations. That's always a little bit tricky, but we're going to look at this more in depth when I'm going to do it on the legacy machine. So let's hit new here. So the first sector, it's fine here. We can accept the default because it's going to leave some space at the beginning of the disk. Then we need to define the size of this partition. So for the EFI partition, in this case, I'm going to create a 300 megabytes uh, partition size. So the current type is A300, which is, of course, not correct. We need to define this as an EFI partition. So the code for that is EF00, and then we can hit enter. So we can also give a name to this partition. I'm going to call mine EFI and hit enter. And there you go. We have now there our EFI system partition. I'm going to move down here to the free space and hit new. And I'm going to accept the default again for the first sector. And the size in sector, this is actually the size of the root partition. So I'm going to give to the root here, let's say 25 gigabytes and then hit enter. Now, 8300 as a code is fine because it will be a Linux file system. And the partition name is going to be a root in my case. And now I can go back here and go to the free space and hit new again. And we can accept here all the defaults also for the size because it's going to take the rest of the disk. The code is also OK. And the partition name is going to be home in my case. And there you go. We have now there our three partitions. Now we are not done yet. We need to actually write these changes to the disk. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to write and hit enter and type in yes. And it's going to take a moment to do this. There you go. The operation was completed successfully. And now we can quit out of CGDisk and we are back on our root arch ISO. So if I type in lsplk, you can see there I have my three partitions ready to go. So let's begin now formatting our partitions. Let's begin with uh, VDA1. So let's type in mkfs.vfat. It has to be a FAT file system because it's an EFI system partition. And then slash dev slash VDA1 and hit enter. There you go. Now let's format our root partition, which is VDA2. So mkfs. So for this tutorial, I'm going to go very simply with ext4 because I'm going to concentrate a little bit more on the Sway window manager after and then slash dev slash VDA2 and hit enter. So I'm going to repeat the same process here for VDA3. So I'm just going to pull up the last command with the up arrow and replace the VDA2 with VDA3 and hit enter. And there you go. We have now our partitions formatted. So let's type in again LSBLK here. 
and we can see again our partitions in front of us. So let's begin now mounting the root partition by typing in mount slash dev slash VDA2 and we're going to mount this under slash MNT and hit enter. Now let me actually type in again lsbk. You can see VDA2 is now is mounted on the MNT directory which is the installation directory. This is where the system is going to be installed. So now if we want to actually mount VDA1 as a boot partition and VDA3 as a home partition, we need to create both directories into this mount directory because that's where the system is going to be installed. So we can type in actually mkdir and then slash mnt slash and then we can open the curly braces here and we can type in boot comma home and then close the curly braces and then we can hit enter. So now we can mount VDA1 and VDA3 respectively. So let's begin with VDA1. So mount slash dev slash VDA1 onto slash MNT slash boot. And we can do also mount slash dev slash VDA3 onto slash MNT slash home and hit enter. There you go. So if I type in again lsbk, you can see that we have our mount points ready to go. So this is it actually for uh, preparing the disk for the installation for the UEFI machine. So let me pause the video here quickly and I'll jump over to the uh, legacy machine and I'm going to do the same process here for the legacy machine so that you can see how it's done. If you have a UEFI machine, you can skip over it and you can proceed with the installation of the base system. So I'll see you in a bit. So here we are on the MBR legacy uh, ISO and let me again here do the same thing. I just need to enter the video parameter for it to pick up the video resolution and then I can start this up. And I'm going to through quickly uh, the same commands I did before for the UFI machine. I just want to show you here how you can partition your disk with another tool. So it's going to take a moment here to boot up. There you go. So set font tur-132n to increase the font size. And then I'm going to load my keyboard layout here. Again, this is always coming with the American keyboard. There you go. And the process for internet is the same as I showed you before. And uh, so we can refresh again our servers because I have already an internet connection here, dash SYY. And now LSBK, you can see I have the same disk called VDA here, but that's actually here a legacy machine. So let's begin preparing the disk. And this time I'm going to use CF disk on slash dev slash VDA and then hit enter. Now you can see here select label type. Now this is actually a legacy machine. So in theory, you should select the DOS uh, label. Now, as I explained also in one of my latest videos about partitioning the disk, there are several possibilities here with the uh, legacy system. You could actually have also a GPT label on a legacy system but then you will have to create also a BIOS boot partition. The most typical way on legacy systems is actually to create a DOS disk label. So it's really depending also on your system. So this is a little bit the issue with legacy systems because there are several possibilities. Even the DOS disk label sometimes requires a boot partition with the boot flag. So there is not really magic formula to tell you that there is one thing which works for everybody. But the thing that is on the ArchWiki is the one I'm going to follow. So I'm going to create actually here a DOS label. And I'm going to create here basically just a swap partition a root partition and a home partition. So we are already here on the free space and I can hit new. And the first partition I'm going to create is actually the swap partition. The reason I'm creating the swap partition on a legacy system is because typically legacy machines might have less RAM than UFI machines. It's not always the case, of course, because you can always add more RAM. But usually if it's an old computer, you would have probably fewer RAM and probably fewer supported RAM as well. So I create for that here a swap partition. So let's say this machine I think has two gigabytes of RAM. And so I'm going to create actually a four gigabytes swap partition. And then here I can hit enter. Now it's actually a primary partition. This is actually one of the limitations of the uh, legacy system. It can have maximum four primary partitions. If you need more, you will have to create three primaries and one extended when you can create more in there. So I'm going to select here primary. And as you can see, 
it's now created and it says here on the bottom left partition type Linux, which is actually wrong because we want to have here a swap partition. So I'm going to go to type and I can see here just one above it's called Linux swap. This is what I need. So I can hit enter and now it's correct. So now we can go down to the free space again and we can create our root partition. So again, I'm going to do the same here. So I'm going to create a 25 gigabytes for the root and it's a primary partition and a3 linux as a file system that's fine so that's okay now we can move down here to the free space and we can also hit new and we can accept here the default because it takes the rest of the disk it is a primary and it's linux 83 so we have as you can see there now our three partitions now we need to write also these changes to the disk so let's go to write here and we need to type in yes or no. Of course, we are not typing yes. And as you can see there, the partition table has been altered. So now we can exit CF disk. We can go to quit here and we can clean up our terminal and type in again lsblk. Now you can see there our three partitions. So let's begin formatting this partition. So let's begin with the swap partition, which is actually not really a partition that needs to be formatted, but it needs to be defined as a swap. So Let's type in mkswap and then slash dev slash vda1 and hit enter. And then we can activate it by typing in swap on slash dev slash vda1. And there you go. Now let's format the root partition. So mkfs.ext4 on slash dev slash vda2 and hit enter. And we're gonna repeat the last command by hitting the up arrow here and replacing VDA2 with VDA3 and hit enter. There you go. So again, we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna mount these partitions. So let's type in first lsblk to see our partitions. And we have to begin with our root partition. So mount slash dev slash VDA2. And we're gonna mount this under slash mnt. And again, if I type in lsblk, you will see that mnt is now mounted on VDA2. So that's again our installation directory. Now, to mount VDA3, which is our home partition into the home directory, we need to create the directory into the mount directory because it's our installation directory. So mkdir slash mnt slash home, and then hit enter. And now we can mount our home partition. So mount slash dev slash VDA3 on slash mnt slash home and hit enter. Now swap does not need to be mounted because it will be mounted afterwards on the fstab file when we will generate the file system table. So lsblk and there you can see we have our mount points. So from here on actually the installation procedure is the same for UFI machines as well. So I'm gonna jump over to the UFI machine to continue to the base install. So we are back here on the UFI machine and we can now proceed by installing the base system. So let's do this by typing in packstrap slash mnt. Remember, this is our installation directory. So the base package, we need to install this. I'm going to install the Linux kernel here. This is for the latest Linux kernel. And then also Linux dash firmware, which is going to provide you some firmware for your computer. I'm going to install also in my case amd dash u code. If you have an Intel processor, you can install, of course, Intel-U code. I'm going to install also Git because I'm going to use it later and also Vim. And I think for now it's going to be enough for the base packages. So we can just hit enter and it's going to download now the packages and install them. So this is going to take about like 30 seconds, uh, depending, of course, also on the Internet connection. So I'm going to pause the video here and I'll be back with you guys when it's done. So here we go. The packages are now installed and we need to now generate the file system table where all the mount points are stored. So let's type in gen fstab dash capital U. So we are taking basically the information, the mount points we have under slash mnt that we created before. And we are going to actually put this information into slash mnt slash etsy slash fstab. So here it means basically we are taking the mount points that we created before when we mounted our partitions, remember under slash mnt, and we're gonna put that information into the newly created file system in our installation directory, which is slash mnt, and in a file called fstab, and then hit enter. So there you go, it's done. Now we can move into our installation. 
And as you know now, uh, the installation directory is slash mnt. So to move in there, we can type in arch dash root slash mnt and hit enter. There you go. So now we are in our new installation. If I type in ls here, you will see our file system here that we just installed. So we need to here on the UFI machine create a swap file. Now, if you're using a legacy machine, we created a swap a partition before. You can skip this step, but on the UFI machine, if you want, you can create a swap file. To do this, we're going to use the dd utility. So dd if equal slash dev slash zero. I will explain you afterwards what it means of equal slash swap file. So basically it means here we are creating a file called swap file and the size of this swap file is zero right now. And the base is equal to one megabytes, And the count is going to be for me in my case equal to 1024. So if you count this, you can imagine what happens. We are creating a one gigabyte swap file basically. And I'm going to add here also status equal progress and then hit enter. So as you can see there, we created our one gigabyte uh, file called swap file. So now we need to change the permissions on it so that we can afterwards activate it. So let's type in chmod 600. These are the correct permissions for the slash swap file. And now we can create the swap by typing in mkswap slash swap file. And we can also activate it now by typing in swap on slash swap file. There you go. Now, the last step for the swap file is to actually add it to the fstab files if you have a UFI machine, of course. So let's type in vim slash etsy slash fstab. And I'm going to go down here to the empty space. I'm going to create a comment here to keep things neat. And this is the swap file. And as a device here, we have slash swap file. The mount point is none because it doesn't have any. The file system is swap. The options are defaults and the checks are zero and zero. And then we can save this file and exit BIM. There you go. We have now our swap file in place. So now we need to proceed installing the base system. That means basically the base services for the system. And for that, I'm going to use actually my script that I have on GitLab is not really a script. It's just a list of commands in a shell uh, just to make the installation a little quicker. And then we are going to build afterwards the Sway window manager from there. So let me pull my uh, Git repository by typing in git clone HTTPS colon slash slash and then gitlab.com slash EF Linux slash arch dash install dash base. Now this is my private repository. I will leave a link to my public repository in the video description below so you can change actually the link of this repository. It's not actually Arch install base. It's, I think it's Arch install public or something similar. So you will have to replace the repository when you do this. In there you will find the same basically scripts that I'm using in my private one. So I can hit enter here and I need to authenticate because this is actually a private repository and my password and now I'm downloading it. So there you go. Now if I type in ls, you will see the first one there, actually ls-l, it's better. You can see there I have arch install base, so my repository is there. So I need to move in there, so cd and then arch install base and again ls-l and the script I'm looking for here is the base script. So let's edit it by typing in vim base.sh. So what happens here? I'm creating the uh, local time here, the time zone. So you need to change this, of course, accordingly to yours. I'm creating also the locales with the set editor here. This is basically going to create the US locales, the US UTF-8, as you can see also afterwards in the locale.com file. I'm also creating the vconsole.com file because I changed the keyboard layout. I'm creating the host name, the hosts file here changing also and also the password of the root user. Now password here, of course, is generic. You can change this if you want. And then I have the packages here uh, for the base installation, basically. So what I want to remove here is actually is this no confirm option because I do want to actually confirm it. 
And the other thing here, what we need to take care of is the graphic driver. So if you have an AMD card, you can actually uncomment this command here and install the XF86 video AMD GPU package. That's gonna provide you with the AMD driver. If you have an Intel card, the Mesa driver should be already installed. And so is the same thing for the NVIDIA driver. As I said before, Sway does not support proprietary drivers for NVIDIA. So that means you will need to install actually the Nouveau driver. And as you can see here, I have actually, let me pull this over for you so that you can see better here. I have here this uh, wiki to the, uh, this is actually the Arch wiki. I will leave a link to it in the video description below. It's gonna tell you how you can actually use this driver. So how you can install it. Again, this is uh, with the Mesa package, which should be actually already installed for 32-bit application support. Install also the lib32 Mesa package from the multi-lib repository, which you have to enable. And for the DDX driver, which provides 2D acceleration in XOR, uh, which we are not gonna use anyway, you can install this package as well. Now, there are also some other things here about the enable early KMS, but we're gonna see this later because it's valid also for other drivers as well. So again, I will leave a link to this in the video description below. And what else? Here we need to change also actually the grab uh, directory because actually it's not boot EFI in my case, but it's boot only. And one thing is also very important. If you have a legacy machine, the command to install grab here is gonna be slightly different. I'm gonna type it here, but I'm not gonna run it because it's not gonna work in my case. But I just wanna show you if you have a legacy machine, what you need to type in. So I'm just gonna put here a comment so that it's not gonna be run. But the command that you'll need to run is grab dash install dash dash target equal i386 dash pc and then you just specify the disk name so slash dev slash vda in my case but of course you will change it with yours and after that the grab configuration command is going to be run and some system services are going to be enabled now if you don't have a laptop like in my case you can actually disable the tlp service and then in the end there are also some other commands here for other services as well so what I can do here now, I can save this file and exit uh, Vim. And I need to change the permissions of the script. So chmod plus x on base.sh. I'm gonna go back here to my root file system because I wanna run it from there. So dot slash arch install base and then base.sh. And now it's gonna run the script. So I need to make the selection now for the repositories. Now, JEX is fine. I can select actually here the first repository. Now, this choice is important and that's why actually I wanted to confirm these choices. It's the XTG desktop portal implementation. So we have three repositories. As you can see, one is GTK, one is KDE, and one is WLR or Wayland Roots. So what we need to do here in this case, we need to select the third one because we're gonna install Sway, which is based on Wayland and then hit enter. So we need to remove here IP tables because it's in conflict with NFT. And now we can proceed with the installation of the base system. So this is gonna take probably one minute, again, depending on your internet connection. So I'm gonna pause the video here and I'll be back with you when it's done. So here we go, you can see there, we have now finished the installation. Now it says done, type exit and reboot, but we need still to make one step before we do that. So because we need to put the graphic drivers in the module sections of the MK init CPIO comp file. So let's type in vim slash etsy slash mk init cpio.conf. And now depending on the card you have or you're using, you need to put this into the modules section here. So for example, if you have an Intel card, you can put in here i915. If you have an AMD card, you can do this with AMD GPU. And if you're using the Nouveau driver, you can type in, of course, Nouveau. There you go. Then once you've done that, you can actually save the file and exit bin, which I'm not gonna do because I don't need this, but I'm gonna save now and exit. And after you have done this and you have modified this file, you need to rerun the MK init CPIO configuration. So you need to type in MK init CPIO dash P on the Linux kernel that we just installed and then hit enter you will be regenerating your images and then you will be good to go. So after we have done that, we can actually exit and go back to the uh, root Arch ISO, 
we can unmount our ISO there by typing u mount dash a or dash r and we can reboot our machine and if everything went well we should be greeted by the reboot here by the grab bootloader so let's see what happens here if we have grab coming up there you go we have grab here and i can see i forgot actually to add one option at grab which is again the uh, video resolution so let me add it here uh, for runtime video equal 1920 per 1080 there you go and then control x to start and as you can see the system is booting up fine so i can log in now with my username and my password and i can type in again set font tur dash 132n and i have my bigger fonts there so we have the base system here and now we are ready to install our wayland window manager now before doing that actually let me install also an helper for the aur because there are some packages that we might need from the aur as well so i will type in here git clone https colon slash slash aur.archlinux.org and slash paru dash bin i'm gonna download here the binary because it's a little quicker to compile then i can move into the parubin directory here and make pkg dash si and it's gonna take really a moment to do this because it's a binary there you go i need to enter my password and proceed with the installation and that is done there you go so let's proceed now installing the sway window manager so we can type in sudo pacman dash s so the first package i want to install is the sway package we have also sway lock and this is the locking screen mechanism for Sway. We have also Sway Idle, which is helping us to set the idle settings for Sway. We can install also Alacrity, which is the default terminal in Sway. However, I'm gonna install also Terminator because it's a little easier to configure for this tutorial. And I'm gonna install also Firefox here. Now, it's also advised to install the menu because it's already configured also in Sway. Now, the thing here, if you're using actually the menu, you need to install also Xwork X Wayland. Otherwise, it will not work unless you're using the menu Wayland from the AUR. But I'm going to show you this a little later. So for now, let me type in the menu here. And I'm going to install also Xwork dash X Wayland, which is again the compatibility layer between Xwork and Wayland so that you can use Xwork apps on Wayland. So I think that's enough for now. So we can just hit enter here and we can accept the defaults and proceed with the installation. This is actually not a big uh, installation. There are very few packages here, as you can see, and that's done. So have you noticed that something is missing from this installation? There is no display manager. So we could install a display manager. There are two display managers which are compatible with Wayland right now, which are STDM and GDM. But for this video, I decided to do something slightly different. And that is, this time we are going to actually install a console display manager instead of a graphical display manager. And that console display manager is called LY, L-Y. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. So we need to install it from the AUR because uh, it's there. So we can use Paru because we have it now available. So Paru s and then ly-git it's the name of the package and then we can hit enter so here is an error but we can skip that because just too many packages uh, too many packages result that's fine we can just proceed the review here and we can just quit out and proceed with the installation there you go this is not going to take long because it is a very small package it shouldn't take more than a couple of seconds and afterwards we are going to be able to uh, enable the display manager as we usually do with systemd. So there you go, it's installed. So we can type in now uh, sudo systemctl enable ly.service and hit enter. There you go. Now I'm creating already the files needed for Sway. So let me actually type in cd.config here. And here I'm gonna create the Sway directory with mkdir Sway. And I'm gonna move in there. There you go. And in here, I want to copy actually the default configuration that we installed now. So let's type in cp slash etc slash sway slash config. And we're going to copy it here in this directory with the dot. So now we type in ls, you can see we have our config file in there. 
Now let's open this file for a second. So vim.config. So this is basically looking like an i3 file, right? You see here we have the set uh, menu. We have here, for example, bind sim. We have several commands which are very similar to i3. This is actually an i3 compatible file. Now, as it says also on the ArchWiki, your i3 file should work actually out of the box. In my experience, it's not always the case because it depends on the programs you are used to have on your i3 configuration. And because i3 is based on actually on x11 and, on, on, and not on Wayland, it might be that some programs are not working. And when you try to launch Sway, it might not launch at all. So the bind sim, the, the key bindings, yes, are completely compatible with i3, but you'll need to check your i3 file before you'll be able to use it here on Sway anyway to make sure that there are no errors coming up on Sway afterwards. So let me go down here at the bottom of this file because I need to configure a few things before we can get started. So let me hit Control F here and I'm gonna create a new line here. So the first thing here I want to do is actually to change my keyboard layout because Sway by default comes out of the box with the US keyboard again. So for, to change this, for example, I can type in input type colon keyboard and then I open the curly brace. I go down one line and hit the tab key and type in xkb underscore layout and now you can put in the layout you have for your keyboard. In my case is ch, this is the layout for Switzerland. And now I can close this function by closing the curly brace. There you go. Now let me go back here at the top of the file to check something else, which is the display resolution. So this is very important because it helps you to find out several things. So for example, you can see there it says you can get the names of your outputs by running sway msg t get underscore outputs. This command basically it's the equivalent of x render. It will tell you the name of your display, which resolutions are supported and so on. Now, for example, in this case, I can actually uncomment this line above, which says output, because this one will help you set the display resolution for your display. So I know, for example, that by running the other command here, the display name for me will be virtual one. So I can change this to virtual dash one and the resolution is 1920 x and the position is also correct. So this way, Sway will pick up correctly my resolution. So now I can save this file and exit uh, Vim. And I think for the basics, it's okay. So we can just reboot our machine here and we will be greeted again by Grab. And again, I forget to change again the Grab resolution here. Let me do it one more time. I think afterwards I will do it in the file itself and control X to start. There you go. And we should be greeted by the display console. So this is actually called LY. So the light display console manager. So you can see that it's very simple. F1 shut down, F2 reboot. We have the choice there for Sway. Now for the login here, I can go with my username because it was created and my password. And when I hit enter, I am into Sway. So very simple. It's a very fast display manager. It works really well if you want an alternative instead of a graphical display manager. Now you can see here we have Sway, so it has its own default background that we can change, of course. We have here, for example, also the same bar that we, a similar bar, I would say we see in i3. This is the Sway bar actually, but we can change this. I'm gonna show you this afterwards. And so when we hit mod enter, we open Alacrity, which is the default terminal. So actually I forgot, I wanna change this to um, Terminator. So let me go into the configuration file as well. I think Alacrity is somewhere on the top here. There you go. I'm just gonna do this because I don't wanna actually spend time configuring Alacrity right now. So I'm just gonna use here Terminator and I'm gonna save this file and close it with mod shift Q. Now if I reload the configuration file with mod shift C and again mod enter, I have Terminator here up and running. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to actually configure this very quickly. I'm just gonna go full screen here for a moment. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the window borders. I'm gonna go under profiles here. I'm gonna change yours to underline. I'm gonna take away the show title bar and for the system font here, I'm gonna go actually with uh, source code pro regular size 14 because it's slightly easier to read also for you. 
I'm gonna go also to take away the title bar icon. I don't need this. And for the colors, I'm gonna go with white and black. The background, it's gonna be a little bit transparent. This is already implemented in Sway. And also the scroll bar will be disabled. And then we can close this. There you go. You have already Terminator here up and running. I can actually increase the font size as well. So this is the basic, say very basic install of Sway. Now I wanna show you just a few things because I cannot show you of course everything here. So as I told you before, there is already a lock screen integrated here in Sway, it's called Sway Lock. And you can activate it by typing in Sway Lock here. You can see it's a simple white display and I can just type in my password and we are back in. So there are other uh, lock screens that um, will be listed in the GitHub uh, wiki that I showed you at the beginning of the video. You can also choose, of course, other lock screens as well. They are easy to install and configure. Now, if you want to have a key binding for this, you'll need to pull up the configuration file and I'm gonna go down again to the, to the end of the file and I'm gonna type in, in here, bind sim, then mod plus X, because this is my key for locking the screen. And by hitting this key, we are going to execute sway lock. There you go. You can give it also a color, for example, with dash C. Let's say, for example, five, five, oh, I don't know, zero, 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 something like that. And then we can save this file and exit. We can reload the configuration file with mod shift C. And now let's hit mod X and that's the lock screen. And I can type my password and I'm back in. So very simple to configure the lock screen in Sway. Now, another thing that we can change here are the fonts because let's open up again the configuration file. The thing here, there are no fonts selected in this configuration file. So we need to actually define one. So we can go down here to one spot in the file. I'm gonna pick up actually here. I'm gonna do it here. I'm gonna create some spaces here. And here for the font, I'm gonna use the same basically command that we're using for i3. So I'm gonna type in, in here, font, pango, colon, and then the font you wanna use. So I'm gonna use actually source code pro. I'm gonna use the medium in this case, and the size is, let's say 11. And then we can save this file and exit. And again, when we reload the configuration file, you can see we have already the fonts in place and it looks already a little bit larger and a little easier to the eyes. So what next? So how about the bar? So the sway bar, as it says also in the GitHub wiki, is uh, very configurable. I haven't tried this yet, so I'm not going to do it in this video. But if you have, for example, an i3 status bar, which is already fully up and working, you can use that here as well. So what you need to do first, you need to type in sudo pacman dash s because we need to install i3 status and then hit enter. Then we can type in our password and install the package. There you go. Next, we are gonna create the directory for the configuration file. So cd.config, we're gonna do it in here. So mkdir, and it's gonna be called i3 status. There you go. So I actually have already one configuration for i3 status because it's in the repository I downloaded before. Now you can go also to the public repositories. I have also the i3 status configuration files in there, but I'm gonna use mine in this case here. So I'm gonna copy that over into the uh, i3 status directory that I just created by typing in cp dash arch install Linux space i3 and then i3 status and then i3 status.conf. I'm gonna copy it in here. There you go. Now the bar is there, but we need to define it also in the configuration file for uh, Sway. So let's type in vim and .config and then Sway and then config, there you go. So let's go down here, control F to go down. And what I wanna do here, I want to actually comment out the bar because I don't wanna use it right now. So let me do this very quickly. There you go. And we can go down at the end of the file again here and I can enter now my configuration for my bar, what I have. So I'm gonna type in bar and then open the function, go down one line and then tab key and type in status underscore command i3 status. And then we need to type in dash C to define the configuration file. The location of the configuration file is under my home directory here, dot config slash i3 status and then i3status.conf. 
there you go that's the configuration file I'm using then I can save this file and exit reload the configuration file with mod shift C and as you can see we have their i3 status on the bottom now there are some glyphs there which are missing because the font is not there so let's change this by typing in sudo pacman-s ttf dash font dash awesome and then hit enter i think it's the correct package there you go and now if we reload again with mod shift c you can see that we have our glyphs so everything looks good so you can see that we have also our background now what, what if you want to change the background well you might say well why don't you install nitrogen well nitrogen will not work on wayland so we'll need to use another method now there are also several other, other methods explained on the github wiki i showed you at the beginning of the video but if i pull up here the um, configuration file for sway and we go back at the top uh, you can see here we have actually the output command output star bg so we are outputting to the background a picture right now which is under uh, the user share backgrounds directory we can change the directory we can select another picture let me give you an example so let me open up here with mod d let me open up firefox and let's say we are going to search here this is by the way firefox 89 uh, with a new interface i'm going to search here for nature 4k wallpaper well i don't have actually a 4k screen but it doesn't matter so I'm gonna change this to English and go to images. And so let's pick up something from here. I'm gonna pick up this wallpaper, it looks nice. There you go. So I'm gonna download here my resolution and I'm gonna save the image as, in the pictures here, I'm gonna call it nature, for example, and click save. There you go. Now I can close here Firefox mod shift Q and close the tabs here and so uh, now we can change basically this uh, directory so instead of this we can enter here we can delete all this information and we can enter in here the home directory under pictures and then the picture is called nature.jpg and the fill stays because it's going to fill basically the screen so we can then save this file and exit vim reload our window manager configuration and as you can see we have our new wallpaper there so that's very simple as well now the last thing i want to show you here before i wrap up this video which is already quite long it's actually what happens if we remove the x wayland layer compatibility between xorg and wayland so let's type in sudo pacman r xorg x wayland now i'm going to type in my password again and proceed with the removal. Now I need to exit once this way. So mod shift E is the same shortcut as we have in i3. And I log in again with my password here. Now, if I hit mod D, for example, you will see that nothing happens. And that's because D menu requires actually that compatibility layer. How we can do actually, if we don't wanna have that layer, this is just hypothetical because many of you want to probably have it. But if you don't, then you will need to install another package from the AUR by typing in paru dash s and it's called the menu dash wayland dash git and then hit enter now proceed with the review here and proceed with the installation there you go so again this is not going to take too long so as you can see here we need to remove the menu so i'm going to type in y and proceed with the installation and the installation is now done so we can clean up the terminal and so for that to work, we need to change again our configuration file. So let's go back in there. And what I need to do here, I want to actually just comment out the previous one because I don't want to delete it. Maybe I need it if I want to go back to Xvaland afterwards. But I need to enter here the new key binding. So I'm going to type in here bind sim and then a mod plus M. I like for menu, this is for me easier to remember and then exec and then d menu dash wl underscore run dash i and then we can save this file and exit vim and now we can reload the configuration file so mod shift c and now if i hit mod m you can see we have the menu there up and running just fine so watch what happens if we type in now firefox for example 
you will see it's not launching. So it's requiring actually the X Wayland uh, compatibility layer. Even you define the Wayland variable, uh, which is also described in the Arch Wiki, it will work only when the terminal is launched. So to avoid this, you can install back the X Wayland uh, compatibility layer and you will avoid these problems. If you don't want to do that, you can install also another browser which is fully Wayland compatible like Midori, for example. So you can type in sudo pacman-s and then Midori and enter our password here. Proceed with the installation. There you go. And now if we search for uh, Midori, you will see it's going to work fine on Wayland because it supports Wayland. So that's an alternative. Now, if you want to install also, for example, a file manager, which is working on Wayland, you can try, for example, Nautilus, which is the uh, file manager from GNOME, which supports Wayland very well. So we can install this, for example, and then we can just open it up. So Nautilus, and you can see it works fine. So again, this is just to get you started with the Wayland window manager. I will leave every resource I used in this video in the video description below so that you can explore yourself. I will dig a little bit more deep here and in the future I will do also a full customization tutorial for Sway as well. Anyway, this will wrap up this video. I hope you liked it guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will try to answer you as soon as I can. I hope you also that you liked the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and sub to the channel if you haven't already. That always helps me out. And if you want to support my work, you can become a Patreon. Or if you want, you can also donate via PayPal through my website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I'll see you very soon in the next one.